Siyata Deshmaya, we're going to learn Tainis Davchov Dalad. We're going to start on the last line of Davchov Gimel on the base. Says the Gemara, Rabbi Yossi Bar Ovin have a Shriach Kameid, Rabbi Yossi Dimin Yukras. Rabbi Yossi Bar Ovin, he was used to attending the Shiurim of Rabbi Yossi Dimin Yukras. And we're going to learn a little bit about this Rabbi Yossi Dimin Yukras. Shavke, at some point, Rabbi Yossi Bar Ovin left Rabbi Yossi Dimin Yukras, the Osele Kameid, Ravashi and actually went to learn before Ravashi. Yoim Echad, one day, Shom'ei, the Kogoris, one day, Rabbi Yassi Bar Ovin heard of Ashi, who was saying the following teaching, Omar Shmuel, Hashoile Dag Menayom, if somebody takes a fish out of the sea on Shabbos, Kivan Sheyovish Boy Kisela, as soon as there's a dry spot on the fish, which is the size of a sela, the size of a coin, Chayev, the one who did that, this fisherman, is liable for desecrating the Shabbos. It's Chilul Shabbos of Netilas Neshama. We know that one's not allowed to kill an animal on Shabbos, and a fish can only survive in the water. So if you take a fish out of the water and put it straight back in the water, then it will still survive. You haven't killed it. At what point, even if the fish is still squirming around, and even if it maybe doesn't look like the fish is completely dead, but at what point is the fish considered dead? That's if it has a dry spot as large as this Sela coin. Omole, Sir Biesi Bar Ovin, said to him, said to Ravashi, Vleima Mar, why don't you, Rav Ashi, add Ubein Snapirov, that there's a condition to this, that that's only true if this dry spot is between the fins of the fish. Only then a dry spot of that size means the fish is not going to survive. A dry spot of that size elsewhere on the fish does not necessarily mean that the fish is going to die, and if he throws it back into the water while it's still moving around, he would not be chayev. Omar late. Sarvashi so responded and said, mar dahi bar ovin omra. Ravashi said to Rabbi Bar Ovin, You are so right, but you know who actually said this halacha that you just said? It was Rabbi Bar Ovin. Why don't you say it in his name? And Ravashi didn't realize that it was this very Rabbi Bar Ovin that was sitting in front of him that was the author of that statement. And he was telling him, Why don't you say it in his name? Omarle, so Rabbi Bar Ovin said, Anonihu. I am this Rabbi Yassi Bar Ovin, so I don't need to say it in Rabbi Yassi Bar Ovin's name. Omale, so Ravashi said to him, V'lav kamed Rabbi Yassi de Menyukras have a shriach mar? Did you not used to go to the shiurim of Rabbi Yassi of, of, of Yukras? Omale, so, so Rabbi Yassi Bar Ovin said to him, Hin, yeah, you're right. I did used to learn with Rabbi Yassi Menyukras, and now I'm learning with you, Ravashi. Omarle Ravashi asked him, Umay tam ashov kemar v'osahocha, why did you leave him, your master, and why did you come here? Omarle. So Rabbi Yassi Ba'ovin said to him, Gavro de albrei v'albrate loichos, because Rabbi Yassi ben Yukrus was a person who didn't show pity on his own son or on his own daughter. We'll soon see what happened there. Alai didi heichachayis, how can I be sure that he's going to have pity and mercy on me? And that's why I left him. And the question is, what actually happened there? So the Gemara now asks, Berei Maihi, what was the story concerning the son of Rabbi de Minyukras that was some display of lack of rachamim, lack of, of pity, that made Rabbi Yassi Braovin leave him? So the Gemara explains, Yei one day have a agiri bedabra. One day Rabbi Yassi Minyukras, he hired some workers to work for him on the field. Nogalu. The day was over, night came, evening came, and he did not bring them the bread that it was either the custom to give them at the end of the day, or he had promised to give it to them at the end of the day. But either way, they were expecting some bread by the end of the day, and he didn't bring it to them, he didn't give it to them. So those workers went to the son of Rabiesi Minyukrus and said, Kofinon, we're hungry. Have a Yosvu Tusu so they happened to have been sitting under a fig tree. And it happened not to be the season that figs grow on the fig tree. Omar, and the son said, and so to speak, he turned to the fig tree and said to the tree, Te'eno, te'eno, fig tree, fig tree, bring forth your fruit, so that the workers of my father can eat. Afiku, indeed, the tree brought out the fruits, and they ate. In the meantime, also Avua, the father, Rabbi Yassi bin Yukros, arrived, and he came with the food. Omar Luhu said to them, 
Do not suspect me of being negligent with the food that I owe you. you don't harbour any doubts. The high de Nogano, because the reason that I was delayed till now, till the evening, a mitzvah torachna, I was busy with a mitzvah. V'ad hashtahu desgoi, and it took me till now to be able to bring you the food. Omrule, the worker said to him, Rachmona lishboch, may Hashem satisfy you. Kiheicha de azbon broch, in the same way as your son satisfied us. Omar Lui said to them, Mehecha, where did my son have food to give you from? Omru, so they explained to this Rabbi Yassim and Yochris, Hochi v'ochi have a maisa. This and this was the story, that your son turned to the tree and told the tree to give us to give out fruits. Omar Lui, so then Rabbi Yassim and Yochris said to his son, Beni my son, Atoi trachto es koincho, you troubled your creator Hashem, lohoitzi teino peiroseo shaloi bizmano, to make a fig tree bring forth its fruits, before its time, then he will also take you from this world before the your set time. Rabbi Yaisi Bra'ovin was aware of this incident and he said there's surely some lack of pity on his son by being able to say that to his son. And now the Gemara says, okay, that was the incident with the son. What happened with the daughter? Brate Maihi. Answers the Gemara, Havile brato bailas yefi. He had a beautiful daughter. Yemuchad, one day, Chaz Yelau Gavri saw a certain man to have a carrier buhutza that was making a hole in the fence of Rabbi Yesi Minyukras's garden or field. And this girl was obviously inside. Vukachozila. And he was looking at this girl, at this daughter. Omar Loi. So Rabbi Yesi Minyukras said to this man, My hai, what are you doing? What's this all about? What are you making a hole in the fence for? Omar Lee, this person said to him, Rebbe, my master, im if I didn't merit to marry your daughter, can I not at least just merit looking at her? Omar Lo, Shabiesi turned to her daughter and says, Biti, Komatsaras Lahu, Librioso. My daughter, you're causing anguish and pain to people. Shuvi la forich, you should go back to your state of dust. Va'ali koshlu beich b'nei odom, so that men should not sin on the account of you. And here again, Rabbi Yaisi Ba'ovin saw that Rabbi Yaisi Dominukras had these very, very high standards that were so strict that he ended up killing his son and his daughter. He was afraid of those standards. Another incident about Rabbi Yaisi Minyukras, Havi Leahu Khamra, he had this donkey, Kedahav Ogrula Kol Yoyma, and people would rent out this donkey every day. Lourta in the evening, have a Mashadri Le Agro Agaba. They would send them payment for the donkey back on its back to the owner, back to Rabbi Yaisi Minyukras. Vaasya Lebe Mora, and then it would come back to its master's home. Vi Tafula Oibotsrula. However, if they either overpaid or underpaid, loyasya, then the animal wouldn't move and this donkey wouldn't come back home. Yoimachad one day, inche zuga de sandale alo. This person who had rented this donkey, he forgot, he left a pair of sandals on the donkey. Vale ozla wouldn't budge ad de shokluhu mina, until they removed from it. Vahada ozla, and only then did it go home. Continues the Gemara, we're now going to learn about a person called Elozar Ish Birta. Kadhava Khazu Le Gaboy Tstoka when the Gaboim, those who were responsible for the Tstoka funds, would see him coming, have a Toshumane, they would go and run away from him, they would hide from him. The Kolmai Dahava Gabe Yoivlu, because his custom was whenever he saw a Gabat Stoka coming, he would take everything he had and give it to the Tstoka. Yoimuchad one day have a solik lushuka. He was going in the market le mizvan nidunya le brate in order to buy a nidunya for his daughter. The nidunya is the things that she needed before getting married. Chazyuhu gaboy tzdoka. The gaboyim of the tzdoka, those responsible for the tzdoka, who happened to be going round to marry off an orphan boy and girl, they saw him, toshumene, and they hid from him because they knew that whatever he had in his pocket, he would give them, and they didn't think that that was appropriate. Ozal, however, it was too late. He saw them, he went to Verot Basrayu, and he ran after them. Omar Louis said to them, Ashbeatichu, b'may oskisu, what are you collecting money for now? Omar Lui, they had, didn't have a choice, and they said to him, b'yosim v'yosayma, to marry off an orphan boy to an orphan girl. Omar Lui said to them, ho'avoida, 
I'm making an oath in the name of the Avoida of the Beis Amigdosh. Shehen koidmim libiti. They come before my own daughter. Shoka al kol to have a bad day. He took all the money he had with him. Vyavlu and he gave it to these gaboyet stoker. Poshlu uchad zuzah. He was left with a single zuz. Zovan beichiti. So he went and he bought with it some wheat. Ve'aseik shadya ba'achlova. He brought the wheat home and he threw it into the granary, into the storage of the wheat. Asoid bisu. His wife came, Omro lo librate, and his wife said to his daughter, My Aisi Avuch, what did your brother father bring home? He went to buy things so you should be able to get married and have a chasna. What did he bring? Omro lo, she said to her mother, Kol mada Aisi, whatever he brought home, Ba'achlevo Shadisei, he threw it into the granary. Asi o lemiftach bovo da'achlevo. So she went to open the door of the granary to see what her husband had brought. Chazas achlevo de mal he saw that the entire granary was filled with wheat. There was so much wheat in there that it was coming out from under the hinges of the door. And he couldn't even open the door because there was so much wheat inside that was pressing against the door. And this was a tremendous miracle. He brought wheat for Izuz and it had increased so many times. Oslo Bratele Bay Majosha. So his daughter went to the base of Medrash, Omrole, and said to her father, Boyore, come and see my Osolocho Oyavcho. So to speak, your loved one, Hashem, look what a miracle he's done for you. Omerloi said to her, Ho avoido, he again made an oath and said, Harehin Hektish Olaich. This Elozo Ishbirta did not want to have any benefit whatsoever from wheat that had been made by a miracle, because somebody who benefits from a miracle, he detracts from his merits in the world to come. And therefore, he donated it all to, to Tzedakah. He said all the wheat is Tzedakah, and that's what it means, Hektish. The literal translation of Hektish means it belongs to, to the Beis Hamikdash. But in this context, it means it's all Tzedakah. Ve'ein loch bohen, and you, my daughter, we are poor people. Elok echot me'anei Yisrael, you can take from this wheat as much as any other poor person for, in Klal Yisrael would be able to take from this wheat, but don't use it as if it's all yours. Continues the Gemara. The Gemara is now going to tell us some incidents that happened when some great people decreed fasts and did the rain come and when. Says the Gemara, Behud Nasiyah Gozar Tanisa. At one point there was rain that was lacking and Rabbi Yehud Anasi, the Behud Nasiyah, he decreed that there should be a fast day. Bo Rachmi, they davened, Veloyosimitra, and the rain didn't come. Omar, he said, Kamo Ika Mishmul Oromosi. Look at the difference there is between Shmuel from Romo, the Yehuda ben Gamliel, and Mir Yehuda, the son of Rabban Gamliel ben Rebbe. He was actually the grandson of the original Rabbi Yehuda Anossi. When Shmuel, who was a Novi, when he davened for rain, then he davened and the rain fell straight away. But look at me, when I daven for the rain, the rain doesn't come down. Oy loy la doyer, woe to the generation, shakain nitka, that is in such a state. Woe to the person that in his days such a thing has happened. And Cholash Daitoi, and Rebuda Nasiya, he felt a little bit despondent and downcast from the fact that his tefillas were not answered. Mitra. And in that merit, in the merit of that humility, Hashem actually did answer the tefillas and the rain came down. Now this Reb Yehuda that we just mentioned, he was a Nossi. He had the right to declare a fast day, and we're going to learn a halacha about this. It once happened that the Bein Nasiya Gozar Tanisa, the court of the Nossi, decreed a fast day, and they didn't tell Reb Yechonon and Reb Lokish about the fast. Let's suffer in the morning. Then they told Reb Yechonon and Reb Lokish that the Nossi yesterday said that today is a fast day. Omar le Reb Lokish Reb Yechonon. Rish Lakish said to Rabbi Yechanan, Haloi kabil na'alon me'urta. There's a halacha that we've already learned about. We saw this on Daf Yud Beis, that these fasts have to be accepted the day before. And he said, we didn't accept this fast upon us because we didn't know it was going to be a fast day. Omer le, Rabbi Yechanan said to Rish Lakish, Anan basrayu gerorinon. It doesn't matter if we accepted the fast on ourselves or not. The very fact that the court of the Nosi, there was the leadership of the people, that they had decreed such a fast day, their declaration makes the fast apply even to us. It's as if we accepted the fast upon ourselves. 
Another incident, says the Gemara, so the court of the Nasi wants to create the fast, but the rain still didn't come down. So Oishayo, the youngest amongst the Chaverim, the colleagues in the yeshiva, he said to them the following brisa. V'hoyo is based on a pasuk. V'hoyo im me'ene ho'edo nasas adish gogo. If it would happen, it was hidden from the eyes of the congregation and done in error, etc. Who are the eyes of the congregation? The eyes of the congregation are the leaders of the congregation, the Sanhedrin. And the pasuk is talking about the Sanhedrin who there was a certain halacha that had got forgotten from them. And it was a mistake, and there's a whole parasha, we're going to learn more about this later on in Shas. And here, this Oishio, the youngest of the Talmidim, of, of the Chaverim, said that Moshe Lekala, it's compared to a bride, a bride-to-be. Sheibe she's still living in her father's home. They call man she'ineo yofois, as long as her eyes are beautiful, ein kol gufo tzricha bedika, you don't need to check the rest of her body. However, if her eyes are weak, if they're not beautiful, you have to check the rest of her body. And he was saying so too, if the leadership of the people are worthy, then the fact that the people themselves are not in the best state, in their their spiritual state, then that can be overlooked. However, if the heads of the community, the heads of the people, are somewhat not in a good state, then the situation of the rest of the people becomes more relevant. And what this Oishio was alluding to, he was saying to the Bein Nasiya, that if the rain didn't come down, consequent to you, you, the eyes of the congregation, the Ene Ha'eda, that you davening and Hashem didn't listen to the Tfilas, that's not very much of a compliment on your part. Now, the home of the Nasi, they were not so happy about Oishia's comments. Osu Avode, so the servants of the Nasi's home came, Baramule Sudra Batsavari. They threw a type of a kerchief, a type of a, uh, a cloth, around Oishia's neck, Vikomatsarule, and they were paining him, they were hurting him. Omri Luhu Bnei Mosi, the people of his place, of Oishia, said to the servants of the Nasi's home, Shavke, leave him alone. Dehonami Matsayulon, because he also harasses us with the way that he speaks to us. Kivan de Chazinon, however, since we see the Cholmile Lishem Shemaim, everything he does is for Hashem's sake, Le Omru Levu Midi, we don't say anything to him. We just let him be, Vishavkinon Luhu, and we just leave him. Atun Nami, so we're asking you, the servants of the home of the Nasi, Shavkuhu, let him be. This is just, he's got a very sharp tongue, and this is the way he responds, but everything he does is he means it, Lashem Shemaim, so leave him alone. Continues the Gemara. Another incident with a fast from the home of the Nasi. Rebbe Gozar Tanisa. Rebbe decreed the fast, for also Mitra, and the rain didn't come. Nochis Kame Ilfa. So Ilfa was the Shliach Tzibur, and he went down, and we're going to see the reason that the people who are davening, and, and the ones who are the Shliach Tzibur, is considered going down, it was Mimamakim Kurosicho Hashem. The Omri Law, Rabbi Ilfa, some say it wasn't Ilfa, it was Rabbi Ilfa. And Omar, he just said the words, Ma Shiva Ruach, the Hashem is the one that makes the wind blow. The Noshav Zika, and the wind started blowing immediately. Moiri Dagi Hashem, and as soon as he said the words that Hashem makes the rain fall, the Osimitra, the rain started coming down. Omer Lei, so Rebbe said to this Shliach Tzibur, Mayu Vodoch, what merit do you have? What do you do? Tell me something about yourself. I davened, the rain didn't come. You just said, Mashiv Rach, Moiri Dagi Hashem, and here the rain is. Omer Lei said to him, I live in a village with, which is very poverty-stricken. They don't have wine They don't have wine with which to make Kiddush and Avdola. And I go into the effort, I exert myself, and I bring wine to make Kiddush and Avdola for them. And that's how I am might see them, I discharge them of their obligations of making Kiddush on their own, and I go out of my way to make sure there should be wine there. And the Marashah says this doesn't mean that Rebbe had less merit than this person, than this Ilfa or Rebbe Ilfa. Rather, the same as we saw in the Gemara before on the Avchofal of Amut Beis, that sometimes for rain to come down, it doesn't need the merits of a very, very great person. Even somebody who is much lesser stature 
is already able to bring the rain. So over here, it wasn't somebody, it didn't need somebody as great as Rebbe to bring the rain, and therefore, indeed, what Rebbe's tefillahs in and of their own are not what brought the rain. It was sufficient for this Ilfa or Rebbe Ilfe that he would daven and it would already bring the rain, and the Gemara discusses what merit he had for that, and that's what the Gemara just told us. Continues the Gemara, Rav Iklolahu Asra. Rav, he was visiting a certain place where there was a lack of rain there. Gozar Tanisa, he decreed a fast, Veloy Osa Mitra, and nonetheless the rain did not come down. Noches Kameh Shlicha de Tzibura. Eshliach Tzibur went down to lead the Tfilis. Omar, and again, he just said, Ma'ashiv Aruach. Venoshav Zika, and the rain started blowing. Omar Meirid Ageshem, Veloy Mitra. The rain started falling as soon as he said, Meirid Ageshem. Omar Lei. Now it was Rav's turn to ask this Shliach Tzibur, Ma'evodoch, tell me about yourself. You seem to have merits that others don't have. Omar Lee, he said to Rav, Mikredar de Kiano, I'm just a teacher of small children. Umakreno lebnei aniyo kebnei atira. And I teach the children of the poor exactly the same as I teach the children of the rich. V'chaldo de'ev shalei, and anyone who cannot afford to pay me, loisho klino minei midi, I don't take anything from them. V'isli peiro, the Chavra, and I've got, I own fish ponds. The Cholman de Posha, and any child who is rebelling, he's refusing to learn Torah. Meshachadino le minayu. I bribe him with some of the fish. O Masadrinon le, and I arrange the matters for him. I make sure he has everything he needs. O Mafaisinon le, and I appease him. Add the Osi Vakori until he's ready to come and learn Torah. Continues the Gemara, another incident. Rav Nachman Gozar Tanisa. Rav Nachman decreed a fast. Boya Rachme Veleosa Mitra. They davened for rain and it didn't come. Omar, he said, Shaklu le Nachman. Take Nachman. Chavoitoi min guda le ara. And throw him down from the top of the wall down to the ground. Which he was more or less saying, Remove me from my high position. I'm clearly not, of, not worthy of it. And Cholash Datei, he became dejected, and his humility caused that Vaosimitra, that indeed the rain would come down. Another incident, Rabbe Gozar Tanisa, Rabbe decreed a fast, Boy Rachame Vaosimitra, he davened for rain, and it still didn't come down. Om Rulei, they said to him, Vahorav Yehuda, Ki have a Gozar Tanisa, also Mitra. When Rav Yehuda decreed a fast day, the rain did come down. Why is your Tfilis? And the fast day that you, Rabbi, decreed, not as effective. Omar Luhu, my avid, he said to them, what should I do? Imishum Tanuya, if you think it's because that this, the, the level of Torah learning was greater under of Yehuda than it is under us, no, Anan Adifnon Minayu. We are superior to them in this aspect. To Bishneid Rav Yehuda, because in Rav Yehuda's times, Kol Tunuye, all that they would learn was Benazikin Hava, was only in the Seder Nazikin. They were not learning all the Shas, all the Shisha Sidre Mishnah. They would only learn one of the parts, one of the sections of the Mishnayas. Vanan Komas Ninon, but we learn Bashito Sidrin, all six Zdorim, Zroim, Moed, Noshim, Nazikim, Kochim, and Tyrus. Not just Nazikin. Vachihava Moti Rav Yehuda Be'uktsin, when Rav Yehuda would reach a topic in the laws of Uktsin, Meseches Uktsin in the Mishnayas, for example, the following Mishnah, and these are, this is a Mishnah that is discussing the concept called Yodois. Yodois are handles, stems, or sometimes the leaves, it's something which is used with which to pick up the fruit proper. And it's a Mesechta that discusses at what parts of the fruits are considered Yodois and at what stage do they lose their status of Yodois. A woman who is preserving a vegetable in a pot. And some say it was a different Mishnah, the Mishnah that discusses Zeisim Shekvoshon Betarfehem, that olives that one preserves together with their leaves, then Tohirim, then these leaves are no longer capable of conveying tumma, of transmitting tumma to the fruit proper, because before it was preserved, before the kvisha, then indeed the leaves were used and they were strong enough to be used as a type of a handle with which one could hold the, the yerek, the vegetables or the olives, and therefore it had the same status as a fruit, and if the leaves were tome, it would transmit the tumma to the fruit. However, once they've been preserved, then they'd become much weaker, 
and the leaves were no longer able to be used as a way of holding, they were not firmly attached to the fruit or to the vegetable, and therefore they lost the status of Yodois. And when Rav Yehuda would reach these Mishnayas, Omar, he would say, Havayas de Rav Shmuel kechazinon hocha. These Mishnayas are challenging and difficult to understand, like the analysis of Rav and Shmuel, which means that Rav Yehuda had a challenge being able to understand these halachas that were not in Seyed and Azikin in, in, the, um, in their full way. Va'anan, however, us, komasninon be'uktsin bit we have 13 different yeshivas or schools that are learning Maseches Uktsin. And that's what Rabbah said. Rabbah said we are clearly not inferior to the time of Rav Yehuda regarding our level of Torah. And nonetheless, V'ilu Rav Yehuda, when Rav Yehuda ki have a sholif chad mesana, if he would just remove a single shoe as his sign of, of affliction, and we learnt about this before on Dafyud Beis Amud Beis, and the Marashal discusses here whether he removed the shoe to comply with the halachas on Daf Yud Beis Amud Beis, or whether we just see from there that removing one's shoe is a sign of affliction. But over here, it wasn't one of those serious and severe fast days mentioned on Daf Yud Beis. But as soon as Rav Yehuda removed his shoe, also Mitra, the rain came down. Va'anan, but Rabbi says, us, Kotsavchinon Kuleyema, we cried out all day in davening for the rain, Veleka de Ashkerbon, and we would know nothing, Hashem didn't respond to us. So Rabbi ruled out the idea that Rav Yehuda was superior regarding the Torah learning. Imishum Uvda, is it because of my deeds, says Rabbi, that I'm not deserving of the rain coming down? Iika de Chose Midi, if anybody knows anything I'm doing improper, Lema, you should come forward and let me know. What can the leaders of a generation do? That the, gener- the people in the generation don't meet the favor of Hashem's eyes in the way that previous generations did. So Rabbi was saying that it could well be that it is not my inferiority that caused that the rain wasn't coming down, just the low level of the whole generation. And now, going back to Rav Yehuda. Rav Yehuda Choza Hanu Beitrei. Rav Yehuda saw two people, the Habakkuk Porotzi Berifta, that they were throwing food. They were playing with the food. They were playing with the bread, throwing it backwards and forwards. Omar, he said, Shema mino ika sava ba'alma. It's clear from the way that you're disregarding the bread that there's an overabundance of food in the world. Yoiv Eine, he focused his eyes with some f- reservation against these people and have a kafna, and then it became, there was a famine. Omru le Rabbonon, Rav Kahana, Bereid Rav Nechunya Shami. So the Chachomim said to Rav Kahana, the son of Rav Nechunya, Rav Nechunya was the attendant of Rav Yehuda, Mar de Shriach Kamei, you Rav Kahana, the son of Rav Nechunya, you're the attendant of Rav Yehuda. You regularly appear before Rav Yehuda. Niasye de leifech bepischa de samoch l'shuka. Try and do what you can that your master of Yehuda should go through the doorway that's near the marketplace. So he's going to see there what how desperate the situation is. Asye, so indeed this attendant did that. When Ofek l'shuka and Rav Yehuda went out into the marketplace. Chazo knufya. He saw there was a whole crowd of people gathering together. Omaluhu, my high, said to them, Maybe he said to his attendants, My hi, what's the meaning of this? What's all what's going on here? Omrule they said to him, Akuspa de Tamra Kaima de Komis Davan. They're all standing waiting around a single container of dates that is going to be sold. That's how short they were of food. Omar he said, Shma mino kafna ba'alma. It seems there's famine in the world. When he first looked with contempt at those people who were throwing the food, it seems that he didn't plan to make a famine like this. He was just looked at them with dismay. Why are you throwing around food? And consequent to that, this famine came, and now he became aware of it. Omar Leila Shamei said to his attendant, Shloifli Masana, I take off my shoes. Sholaf Leichad Masana, he removed one of his shoes in affliction and wanting the rain to come. But also Mitra and immediately the rain came down. Even though normally one cannot start a fast in the middle of the day, and this is part of what the Marashah we mentioned before discusses, whether the removing of the shoe was done to conform with the halachas of the tightness or whether he just did it as a sign of affliction.
He was about to remove the other shoe. He came and said to him, Omar Kaddish Baruch Hashem said, Isholfas Achrina. If you remove the other shoe, Machrivna Alma. The whole world is going to get destroyed. And there's a discussion here in the Mepharshim why he wanted to remove the second shoe if there was so much rain, and why was it so important, so to speak, that Hashem didn't want him to do that. Omar of Mori, Barod Abbas Shmuel, Rav Mori, the son of Shmuel's daughter, and we've already learned elsewhere in Shas where Rashi explained why he wasn't referenced by his father's name. He was just the son of the daughter of Shmuel. Why didn't she have a name? This is discussed elsewhere. And no have a aguda de nahar popo. At that time, when Rav Yehuda brought the rain down, I was standing on the bank of the river Popo. Chazoyi le malochi, and I saw malochim de idmu le malochi that were appeared, they were dressed up, so to speak, as sailors. De komaisi cholo, they were bringing sand, umalunhu le arva, and they loaded it onto boats. Vahava kimcha, and de smido, and miraculously the sand turned into fine flour. Osu kule alma le mizvan, then all the people came to buy the flour from them. Omaluhu. But he said to them, the Bach says it should say, Aminaluhu, I said to them, because this is referring to Rev Mori, who said to them, not to Rev Yehuda, Meha loitizvun, don't buy from this flower, Demaisenissimhu, because it's a product of a miracle, and we know that one should not benefit from a product of a miracle. We already saw this early on in the Gemara on Daf of Daladomadalef. Lemochor, the next day, Asyon Arba de Chita de Porzino, the boats of Porzino arrived that had plenty of wheat and the famine was relieved in a natural manner, not needing to resort to miracles. Continues the Gemara, Rova Ikle la Grunya. Rova was visiting a place called Hargrunya. Gozar Tanisi proclaimed a fast day because there was not enough rain, but there also Mitra and the rain didn't arrive. Omaluhui said to them, Bisu kule alma betaani saichu, that all of you should, no one should break their fast that night. You should rest the night, pass the night whilst still fasting. Lemachar omalu, the next day he said to the people, Mi ike de choza chelmo leima. Is there anyone here who saw something that was applicable in a dream? He should come forward and tell us. Omaluhu rebeloza me agrunya, rebeloza of Hagrunya came forward and said to them, Ledidi akriun bechelmi. In my dream, they made me read out the following. They made me call out the following. Shlom tav. Good greetings. Lerav tav. To a good teacher. Meriboin tav. From a good master. Demituve metiv leame. Who from his goodness gives good to his people. Oma. So Rava said, Shma mino, from here it's evident that Ace Rotsin he it's now an opportune time mi boy rachma. Now is the time to daven for for mercy. Boy rachma they davened for Osi Mitra and the rain came down. Continues the Gemara. Hahu Gavra di Chayov Nagdo Bebeidino de Rava. There was a certain person who the Beisdin of Rava had ruled that he deserves lashes. Mishum de Boal Kutis because he was acting inappropriately with a Kutis. With a non Jewish woman. Nagde Rava. So Rava had the man flogged. Umis and the man died. Ishtamo Milsa Beishur Malka. This matter became known to in the palace of Shvur Malka, the king Shvoir. They wanted to punish Rava for having killed this person. Omro Le Ifra Hurmiz. Then this Ifra Hurmiz, Imeida Shvur Malka, the mother of this king Shvoir, said Lebro, said to her son, the king, Loilehevilloch Esek Dvorim Bahadi Yudoi. Don't argue with the Eden. The Kalman de Boyon Mimorayu Yoivluhu, because whatever they ask from Hashem, he he grants them. Omar Los, the king said to his mother, Maihi, what well, give me an example. So she answered, Boyon Rachme Vaosimitra, they daven for rain and the rain comes. Omar Le, so the king said to his mother, Hahu Mishum de Zimno de Mitrahi. The fact that rain comes down is not because they've happened to be calling out to Hashem, it's just it was the t- season of the rain. A test to that would be that they should now, in this season, Bitkufas Tammuz, in the middle of the summer, let them ask Hashem for rain now and see if Hashem answers them. Velesa Mitra, and let's see if the rain comes down. This Ifrahurmiz, the mother of the king, sent a message to Rava. 
kavain daitoch, try and focus well. Or when you daven, a boy rachma and ask Hashem for mercy, the lesa mitra, that the rain should come. Boy rachma. Indeed, Rava davened for rain. Veloyosi mitra. No, the rain didn't come down. Oma lufonov. So Rava said to Hashem, Reboyne shaloylam, elikim boozneinu shomanu Hashem. With our ears we have heard, Avisein usiprulonu, our fathers recounted to us, Poyel pa'alto, the work that you have done, be a meem in their days, be meikedem, in the days of old. You did miracles for them. Onu be'ineinu loiro'inu, but we have never been privileged to see miracles with our own eyes. Also mitra, and indeed the rain came down with such volumes, at the shofuch marozavei de tzipori, until the gutters of tzipori, lediglas, they would pour over, and empty into the river Diglas, which is the Chidekel. Also Avua is Chazid Ebechelmo. Rava's father came to him in a dream, Va'omale and said to him, Mi'ikad mitrach kamishmaya kulihai? Is there anyone who asked Hashem, and so to speak, troubled Hashem to that extent, to make him make a miracle? Omar and his father told him, Shanei duchteich, change the place that you're going to sleep tonight. Shani Duchte, indeed he slept somewhere else that night, and the Mokra the next morning, Ashkeche de Mirsham Purye Besakina, the next day he saw that his bed had knife marks, stabbing marks in them, and it seemed that there were some spirits, some demons that had come and tried to kill Rava that night for having forced Hashem, so to speak, to make this miracle, and his father had saved him. Continues the Gemara. Rav Papa Gozar Tanisa, there was an incident that Rav Papa decreed a fast day. Valeo Samitra, and yet the rain didn't come down. Cholash Libe became very weak. Sraf Pinko de Daisa. So he consumed a spoonful of Daisa, type of a food. Uboya Rachma Valeo Samitra, and he davened that the rain should come down, and still the rain didn't come down. Omale Rav Nachman Bar Ushpazti. Rav Nachman, the son of Ushpazti, said to him, Isorif Mar Pincho Achriti. Maybe if my master, if you're going to consume another spoonful, the dice of this dice, or Simitra, the rain will come. And it seems that Rav Nachman was ridiculing Rav Papa, saying, if you want to daven for rain, you shouldn't have broken your fast before. You might have had to break your fast, but say the davening first. Ichsif, Rav Papa was ashamed, v'cholash daite, and he became somewhat dejected and humble, v'osimitra, and indeed the rain came. And Yimir Tashem, in the next shir, we're going to continue from here discussing Rabchanino Ben Daisa.